Hello students, welcome. This is Dr. Hadi here and you are watching Medical Globe. Dear students, today's topic is carbohydrate. Carbohydrate is a lengthy topic because it contains so many other topics like the definitions, the classification of carbohydrate, the structural uh, chemical properties of carbohydrates all these will be covered in some three to four lectures but in today's lecture we will only focus on the conceptual definition of the carbohydrate we will go into the depth of the definition because unlike other topics the definition of this topic is too short but uh, it requires so much concentration so uh, here we go with the topic of carbohydrate and some terms will also be uh, taught to you people today like like sugar glycone and glycobiology and e even uh, the function of carbohydrates as well so come the definition of carbohydrate which you can see on the whiteboard consists of only four words that is not four i'm sorry it is three words polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones uh, and it's just a single line but th today's most of the lecture the most part of, part of the lecture will be spent in delivering the idea of this dear students before we start the definition we can't go ahead until and unless we do some um, surface study a surface study means some lower class study that because most of the students are um, weak in base and some are very genius so they may understand quickly but most other students they need some more extra informations the valency of carbon carbon is an element right and carbon is also an atom just like every element has atom carbon element also contain atoms so this carbon valency means the number of bonds that it can make is four carbon can make four bonds one two three four this is why we call it tetra valency four bonds can be attached means carbon can be attached to any four atoms similar or dissimilar let's suppose you can write here all are hydrogen atoms so four hydrogen atoms attached to the carbon atom through these bonds and you you can write any other atom here just like if it is hydrogen not hydrogen so you can write here oh or even you can write some other atom like uh here oh here you can write ch3 means you can write anything so this is just i want to give you the idea that every student must remember and must know that carbon in the in the organic compounds must contain four atoms around it so we say the valency of carbon must be four this is first thing which was not the part of this carbohydrate but i have to tell you because most most of the students they will lose their interest if they, they, even they don't know the bonds that it are valency so i'm sorry i have to do this now after the valency of carbon we will go to the next thing that is the functional group what is functional group and don't worry about this because they don't think that um, sir hadi is going to teach us carbohydrate and he has gone into the functional group which is the part of the organic chemistry something else so don't worry this is also very necessary and compulsory we must understand what is functional group a functional group's definition is here mentioned on the whiteboard you can uh, record it you can write it but in order to give the idea of the functional group here are three examples just see here this is one compound 
means this is one organic compound you know what is organic compound an organic compound is that compound which contain carbon atom and mostly usually hydrogen atoms are also there but there are exceptionally some uh, organic compounds which which does not contain any hydrogen atom so the carbon atom is necessary is compulsory so the atoms are the compounds of carbon are called as the organic compounds so these three are organic compounds right okay these three are organic compounds and every compound you can see here consists of three carbon one two three carbon one two three carbon one two three carbon two two six hydrogen six hydrogen six hydrogen this time these three compounds are similar right every student can see that these three compounds are similar quite similar right there is no difference between these three compounds you cannot differentiate between these these three compounds okay and one thing more the carbon which i already told you carbon's valency must be four means carbon must be attached to the four atoms this is carbon so this is one bond for the convenience of the students i have not mentioned anything here so you will suppose that there, there may be any atom right so this is one bond two hydrogens and this is another bond actually these uh, two hydrogen that we write h2 actually this is one hydrogen is at the top and other hydrogen is at the bottom so now you can see there are four bonds one two three four bonds and 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 in order to give the idea to give the clear idea we usually don't write ch2 like this this is ch2 but how we write it we just write it like this just write it like this uh, ch Two. so we will we don't need these hydrogen now along with the bonds right okay fine ch2 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 right ch2 ch2 um, now, now see if I attach here um, an atom or group of atom like this is OH okay fine and here I attach um, chlorine and here uh, what I attach uh, C double bond O and H right if you see the three compounds which were similar are now different from each other so if i ask question from you people that why these three compounds which were similar and now these three becomes different from each other definitely you will tell me definitely your answer will be that here something attached with these compounds these something gave identification to these compounds gave some property gave some identification some sort of identification to these compounds so why because of these atoms so you can see here this is not this is not just one atom two atoms are there oxygen and hydrogen so these two atoms these two atoms are now called as functional group right similarly this compound here you can see chlorine atom is attached just one so this is now only atom in this case this is again this is also uh, a functional group and of course c double bond o h we we can write it as c h o as well but this is very proper uh, form C double bond OH now the, again these are these are th there are three atoms these three atoms are also called as the functional group so why they are called functional groups because these functional groups the presence of these functional groups provide some special properties to these compounds in case of this compound the functional group OH provide 
a special name a family name to this compound this compound will not be now the same compound this will be called now as alcohol right this is now will called as alcohol right the name is changed alcohol alcohol is not a compound but a family of compound right so uh, family of compounds so here chlorine the chlorine atom the presence of chlorine atom give another different property to this compound now this is not alcohol this is something else because here another atom is attached so we call it a halo halogen on halides so this family name is called as halides okay I will not go into the name of this book one two three carbon added so you can use pro propane 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 This is not the time to tell about propane beauty, right? I know we know very well that there are three carbon. So this is propane Before these three groups were attached All these three compounds were similar and they were called as propane 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 now these three are not propane one is called the alcohol other is called the um, uh, halide and the, this one this one is called as the aldehyde aldehyde is not a single compound aldehyde is a family name refers to the combination of many compounds which contain c double bond o h as a functional group so the purpose of this lecture is to give you the idea of the functional group so once we got the functional group then we will come to the definition of the carbohydrate but keep in mind the functional groups are many in number there are so many functional groups we will not go into all these functional groups we will just refer some very special uh, functional groups which are related to the definition of the carbohydrate in the definition of a carbohydrate if you want to, to to clear your concept you must know two very special types of functional groups these functional groups are number one these functional groups are number one called as the aldehyde aldehyde this is one functional group and second one is the ketone this is the another functional group once we are cleared with these two words we will easily get the definition and the concept of carbohydrate so what is aldehyde aldehyde are those organic compounds are those organic compounds which contain c double bond o carbonyl group this is called as carbonyl group c double bond o carbonyl group right carbon two bonds attached with one oxygen one bond is pi bond other one is the sigma bond i can't go into the de detail of the pi bond and sigma bond today because it's not the part of this lecture so two bonds c double bond o and hydrogen this is a functional group so in an organic compounds when this functional group is found c double bond o h and maybe there are some more carbons attached there is no need to watch these to see these right but the most important thing is that c double bond o and h must be there this kind of compound will be called as an aldehyde look there may be four carbon there may be five carbon there may be six carbon there may be seven there may be you are not concerned with all these number of carbon atoms but what you have to do you have to just see with these carbon atoms can you see this c double bond oh or not if you see c double bond oh the whole compound will be called as aldehyde if it contain seven carbon it will be aldehyde if it contains six carbon it will be aldehyde if it contains five carbon it will be aldehyde four carbon it will be aldehyde three carbon it will be aldehyde. so 
you are not concerned with the number of carbon. Number of carbon may be as many, one, two, three, four, five. And usually in organic chemistry, we denote the number of carbon with the R. So R may be one carbon, even in some compounds, R represent hydrogen. But in majority of the cases, R represent combination of carbon. R even represent a quite different compound. So here will be R. That is why uh, we can also say that aldehyde is a, um, a compound where R is attached. R is attached. Uh, I hope you got now R. What is R? Where R is attached to the C double bond OH. Now this is the short form of aldehyde, right? Here R could be one, two, three, four, five, six, any carbon atom. That you will get further idea once we enter into the monosaccharides, glucose, fructose, maltose, you will get this idea clear. But today we are just, I told you in the beginning, we are only concerned today with the concept of carbohydrate. So this, this compound will be called as aldehyde, right? Whether it is in that form or it is in that form, right? Keep in mind, the carbon valency here is not satisfied. I hope you people got that there must be two more bonds, which is not necessary now to mention two more bonds, two more bonds, right? Not necessarily, but now you will understand. After that, compound aldehyde. Oh, one more thing. Most of the students get confused. Um, they cannot differentiate between the aldehyde and ketone. So remember, this C double bond O group will help you understand the difference between aldehyde and ketone. Look at the right side and the left side. One side, this is another side. Maybe this is the left, this is the right. So don't worry. If at one side of the C double bond O carbonyl carbon, you see R means carbon atoms and at the opposite side you see a single hydrogen then this kind of compound will be called an, an aldehyde right now come to the next functional group here as the ketone what is ketone a ketone is also an organic compound it is also an organic compound but it, the, those compounds which contain functional group ketone uh, uh, like this this is this one uh, this one yes okay here carbon 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 atoms are there right again I have not satisfied the valencies but you can see now there is C double bond O is there and on but on the two sides okay here see here on the two sides of the C double bond O you can see carbon carbon there's no hydrogen so that C double bond O is in between the two carbon, in between the two carbon. If you see here, uh, here, um, some students also get confused that is it necessary to write the double bond O on the right side? No, you are, you are given free hand, you will be given free hand. You can write the C double bond O here on the top and H here. No problem you can write C double bond O here so here this is the this is C double bond O on the left side you can see that there are carbon atoms and on the right side is a hydrogen atom but here on the right side and on the left side and both side you can see carbon carbon there okay in more simple words on one side of C double bond O there will be one R and an other side there will be another R such compounds will be called as ketones now you can write it like this ketone you can write like this you can write like this so you are you will be given free hands right this is C double one O carbon carbon don't worry about this you can write compound you can rotate it you can write it in any style as you want uh, I would like I would like to give you one example of ketone here um, just like this this is one carbon another carbon third carbon fourth carbon right fifth carbon 
and six carbon let's suppose here is the double bond O when you find the double bond O is here in between two carbon so blindly say this is a ketonic functional group ketonic functional group and the whole compound can be called ketone so you can go more you can write more carbon here okay but whatever the case is whatever the case is you can also uh, satisfy the valencies it is will be ch3 right here it will be ch2 here it will be ch2 it will be ch2 it will be ch2 and ch2 ch2 is not required sorry the last one mostly the last one are easily written as ch3 uh, first and the last other are ch2 this compound is now called as the ketone because on the right side of c double bond o this whole whether one carbon or two carbon or three all of these carbon will be regarded as one r and on the left side of the c double bond o whether you can see one carbon two three four o, if any any carbon it is three four five anyway this will be another r so r c double bond o r such compound will call it the ketone i hope you got the idea of the functional group aldehyde and ketones now come to the definition of carbohydrate so this is the lucky compounds that in order to understand the definition we had to do a lot of we had to do a lot of things and we did these things just to make sure you got the idea clear now come to the definition carbohydrates uh, in some lower classes primary level uh, or uh, high school level classes the teacher represent potato uh, some kind of beans in front of students to tell them that that this is these are the vegetables or fruits that contain carbohydrate right so it will make the idea clear but we are in advanced level classes i think i don't have any potato or uh, grain to present in front of you but you will understand the exact definition scientifically because i will i hope that the students which are watching this video are master level students those compounds will be called carbohydrate which satisfy two conditions number one they must contain polyhydroxy poly means poly means many and hydroxy means oh hydroxy oh so the whole meaning of polyhydroxy is many oh many oh aldehyde or ketone this is the second condition if a compound satisfy two conditions number one it contain many oh groups condition number one many in a sense more than one two three four oh five oh and condition number two either the compound contain aldehyde or ketone not both right not both any one of the functional group if present then that compound will be blindly called as the carbohydrate Give, I will give you an example. Um, um, here is, this is just a compound. I can write CH3 and then CH2 and then C double bond OH. This is one compound, and here we have CH3. Um, C double bond O and here is CH3 look we can see only one condition here that the, the, the functional group aldehyde is present here if you are watching this so, so if I ask what group what function group is this so you will answer me that this is the aldehydic functional group because c double bond o side contain h and if i say what group is this so you will say c double bond o is in between the two carbon so this is ketonic group okay fine but this is not carbohydrate because these two compounds are satisfying only one condition and we are expecting two conditions here now see if i write here ch 
one if i write one oh here right and one oh here uh, I, I i can make the valency satisfy here right ch2 uh, oh and now now this compound now this compound is called a carbohydrate you can call it a carbohydrate just just don't worry about the name the, what is the exact name of that compound don't go into the names glyceraldehyde dihydroxycetone whatever today's lecture is only to make the concept clear we are not going into the names of the compound but but this is a carbohydrate don't don't worry just say okay this is carbohydrate because it's satisfying the two conditions this is another compound you can write one oh here if you write one oh here and you can write one oh here just write it like this right okay uh, now, now now this is again uh, a carbohydrate because it contains functional groups and it contains OH groups so two two or more than two OH groups must be there then it will be uh, carbohydrate so polyhydroxy many OH so many OH groups are present and they contain also aldehyde and ketonic so these two are carbohydrates these two are carbohydrates you can just uh, clear your concept a little bit more that this one is the aldehydic aldehydic carbohydrate carbohydrate or you can see aldehydic sugar that's one word sugar is also used in the book of satya narayan there is given the difference between the carbohydrate and the sugar carbohydrate is a general term but what is sugar those carbohydrates which are number one soluble and sweet in taste because there, there are some carbohydrates which are not soluble so they cannot be called sugar and there are some carbohydrates which are not sweet some are sweet others are not if a carbohydrate is sweet and soluble you can call it sugar according to the book of satya narayan the definition of the sugar is like this so aldehydic carbohydrate or aldehydic sugar and this one will be this compound will be uh, ketonic sugar or ketonic carbohydrate i can write carbohydrate as simple as cho as well uh, uh, this was um, the two compounds and we make your idea clear you can also write this like this c uh, sorry c single bond c single bond c h2 oh inside book you can see structure of uh, carbon like this um, double bond o and h2 oh so this is just one carbohydrate now you you will see a, a student can be confused this is compound this is another compound. these two are looks different uh, but i just changed their style these two are similar right and this is also a carbohydrate a three carbon carbohydrate a ketonic carbohydrate and this is also a ketonic carbohydrate so you don't worry don't worry about this i will make your concept a little bit more clear that C double bond O is here and on one side of C double bond O whatever you can see whatever you can see you can see CH2 single bond OH so this is your R group and on the other side of C double bond O there is again CH2 OH so this CH2 OH don't worry whatever it is this is another R so in between the two R you have C double bond O so such kind of compound will be called as a uh, ketonic carbohydrate uh, right now there are some terms uh, i hope you got the concept there are some terms a ter terms are one is sugar you got that there is a uh, one term, term called as the uh, glycobiology um, uh, glycobiology is the study of all those carbohydrates in health and disease because whenever uh, 
if you want to study a, a disease so in most of these disease you must have the idea of carbohydrate so if you study if you study the importance of carbohydrate in health and disease this is called as glycobiology and for carbohydrate we usually use the word glyc glyco glyco so you can see glycobiology glycolipids glycoprotein so all students they must know glyc glyc whenever you heard this word glyc this indicates this give us indication to uh, toward the carbohydrate so glyc glycone right a glycone whatever the case is the last but not the least is the function of carbohydrate what are the function of carbohydrate so here all right the function of carbohydrates ah i think the weather is a little bit cold so you can see Uh, what are the function of carbohydrates function of carbohydrates carbohydrate can you can find carbohydrate outside the living body and inside the living body right is a kind of a biological molecule as well so the importance of this molecule is both structural as well as functional structural role of carbohydrate means the carbohydrate is the part of your body structure like the cell membrane right like the cell membrane this is just called as a structural role and functional is that the carbohydrate is performing some role just like cell growth cell growth cell growth this is a function means without carbohydrate cell growth is not possible cell addition attachment one cell attached with another cell is also because of the carbohydrate and even the fertilization fertilization you know this is a biological word fertilization which means the fusion of the egg and the sperm so this fertilization is also possible um, with the help of carbohydrate so this is just a, a function another function is the en energy energy our body need a con need a continuous uh, supply of energy and that energy comes from the carbohydrate so that is four calories per gram if you just take one gram of carbohydrate from that one gram of carbohydrate you can get four calories four calories right four calories this is just the value and uh, third one is precursor 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 means something something so any substance that give us something else in the future such compounds are called as precursor it means from the from the carbohydrate from the carbohydrate I, I, I will write glucose let's suppose that's is a glucose right from carbohydrate we get amino acid amino acid is something else we will discuss this in protein and we can get fatty acid fatty acid is another kind of uh, molecule these two are different molecules so we get these we can get these two from the glucose from the carbohydrate so we will call this glucose is the precursor because it is going to give us something else in the future and carbohydrates are of course a part of the cell membrane part of the cell membrane glycolipids glycoprotein you might have heard the word the carbohydrate is present in the cell membrane in the form of this glycoprotein glycolipids usually carbohydrates you will not find carbohydrate as single alone but carbohydrate will be fined in the form of combination you can see these in combination and storage the most important is storage right storage our body store some carbohydrate and reserve this for emergency purpose sometime if your body is deficient in 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 glucose so your body start consuming utilizing the stored 
uh, carbohydrate that is in in case of our body animals not our body animals the body store carbohydrate in the form of glycogen glycogen right glycogen in the liver inside our liver we have glycogen and glycogen is a carbohydrate which is stored from that glycogen we will get glucose and from that glucose we will get energy because our body's primary source of energy is the glucose so this was the energy and uh, some di dietary sources the last function diet means you take carbohydrate in different uh, types of food like grains potato starch right uh, one thing more carbohydrate is also present in the outer exoskeleton of some uh, insects some insects skeleton also contain carbohydrate chitin you might have heard this word chitin and chitin is also present in the cell wall of the fungi and okay uh, after chitin uh, we have uh, a cell wall of the plant the plant cell wall consists of cellulose cellulose uh, is also a carbohydrate so carbohydrate you can see carbohydrate in plants cell wall in the form of cellulose you can see carbohydrate in 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 in, in fungi as a chitin right and you can see carbohydrate in most other places as well but these are some uh, sources some uh, functions of carbohydrate that i had discussed with you people dear students i hope you got the lecture today this was just the beginning of the carbohydrate in the next lecture we will give you a precise a clear idea of the classification of the carbohydrate thank you for watching the video thank you love is